Hey everybody, it's Lon Sybin, and we're back with our monthly sponsored video from Plex, and we're going to be looking at a new channel guide option for Plex Pass subscribers who use the Plex DVR. I think a lot of you are going to like this. And we're also going to talk briefly about some updates to the VR app for Plex. So if you've got one of these low-cost standalone VR headsets, they've added some functionality to it that we're going to be looking at as well. So before we get into this, though, I do want to remind you that this is a sponsored video from Plex. However, they are not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it is uploaded, and all of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. I've got links down below to where you can find a Plex Pass subscription. If you sign up, you'll help out the channel. You can also gift a Plex Pass to somebody as well, and all of those links you'll find down below in the video description. So let's get into it now and see what some of these new changes are to the Plex DVR. Then we'll look at some VR changes too. Now, as many of you know, the Plex DVR lacked a traditional channel guide. You had this thumbnail-based thing that would tell you what was on right now, what was starting soon, and some new episodes that were coming up later that evening. And some people liked this, some people didn't. It was kind of a personal preference thing. But now on desktop, if you go over to the uh, tab here and click down, you're going to see an option now for channels. And when you click on that, look at this. You get yourself a traditional grid-based channel guide. You've got the times up here, and then you can go over to the arrow here on the side to scroll ahead. They've got a good amount of data here uh, stored in there, so you can more easily browse by network and by time. And if you go up here to the top, you can see you have the ability to look ahead. It looks like about a week. Uh, it's about seven days of data here, and you can start off maybe next Tuesday afternoon and see what's going on you also have a means of narrowing it down just to HD channels as well. So probably an easier way to navigate things. You can still use the search. You can still use the old way of finding content. But if you really wanted that traditional channel guide, uh, now you have it once again. And the grid interface is pretty simple to work with. You can very easily start a recording just by running your mouse over and clicking on that record icon. Uh, likewise, for live TV, I could just click on this channel right now to play it or record what is remaining in that show if I wanted to. And you also have the ability to browse the show to see other episodes. So, for example, on the Odd Squad here, if I click on the rectangle anywhere outside of that circle, it will bring me to a little expanded listing here. I can get more information on the show or I can click on the Odd Squad and get the show page and look at all the episodes that are coming up for that show. So you have some options for uh, browsing that kind of tie in with some of the uh, things that you might be familiar with from before. Now, like the original Plex DVR feature itself, this is rolling out slowly to different platforms. So at the time that I'm recording this, it works on desktop and on the Apple TV. And I'm assuming Android TV will be uh, coming at some point in the near future. I haven't gotten any firm dates on that just yet from them. Now I'm going to switch over to the Apple TV so you can see how it works on here with its nice pastel colors. Uh, so we'll go over here to the guide and when we click on that, uh, you'll see we've got the old style guide here. But if I go over to channels, uh, I will now get the, uh, the grid based channel guide here now too. And I can uh, just scroll my uh, little remote thingy here to the right to look ahead. So you don't have as many options for quickly jumping ahead a week or two on the uh, Apple TV version, but you can at least browse what is on TV currently and then select something to watch and go from there. So it looks like they've got uh, this down pretty decently. If I wanted to record something that is coming up in the near future, I can uh, scroll ahead here. Maybe I want to record the uh, next episode of Sesame Street at 8 a.m. here. I can just click on it and go to record now or just go and see what the other air times are for the show here. So it looks like it you know, works the way you would expect it to work here. Pretty simple and it looks pretty nice too on these two platforms. Let's take a look now at uh, some of the VR changes. Now I covered the Plex VR system extensively a few months ago, but as a refresher, it works on Google Daydream View, the Samsung Gear VR system, and the new standalone Oculus Go that I also looked at about two weeks ago. This is a pretty cool little headset. It's under $200 and it's all enclosed. So you don't need a PC or any other phone or device. You just charge it up, put it on your head and start watching your movies. And this uh, VR feature is free. So you don't need to have a Plex Pass to use it, but there are some Plex Pass features now that are getting enhanced this month. The first one is the ability to uh, share your VR experience across platforms. So if you're on the Oculus Go, for example, you can have somebody with a Daydream View headset join you in your virtual theater and you can watch a movie together. 
Uh, we looked at that during the full review that I did of the system, and it's kind of neat because your friend shows up as an avatar. Uh, they're sitting next to you on the virtual couch, and you can actually talk to them while you're having a shared media experience. It's a really neat way to consume media with friends when they're not nearby. Uh, you can have up to three people join you for a total of four uh, in these virtual rooms, and now you can do it across platform. Uh, the other thing they added for PlexPass subscribers is virtual surround sound support. So if you have a movie that has a surround sound encoding, it's going to do its best to uh, allow your headphones to simulate what it might be like if you actually had a multi-speaker surround sound system. So to test it out, I booted up my Oculus Go here and uh, watched the opening scene of Strange Days, which is a 1995 movie by uh, Catherine Bigelow and written by James Cameron. It's one of these hidden gem movies that uh, I really liked quite a bit. And the opening scene is awesome because it's a first-person perspective of these guys robbing a Chinese restaurant and then getting chased by the cops. And because it's a first-person perspective, they mix the sound to be essentially what you would hear if you were the guy uh, running away from the police. And as he's turning his head, uh, the sound on a regular surround sound system kind of changes and turns with it. They really mix the audio quite well and really shot this scene quite well. One of the best uh, opening scenes of any movie I've ever seen. Uh, and it was really neat to experience that on the Oculus Go here because it did do a pretty passable, decent job of replicating the experience you would have on a proper surround sound system. Not as good, but uh, better than just standard stereo. So that was a nice immersive uh, experience beyond the fact that you're visually immersed into uh, the movie using the Plex VR app on here. Again, that surround sound feature is only available to Plex Pass subscribers, but you can try out uh, the VR system with any of these compatible uh, VR headsets for free because it is a free feature of Plex. So that's going to do it for this month's Plex update. Lots of new and neat ways to browse your media with the grid view here and consume your media on VR. I'd love to get your suggestions for future Plex updates down below in the video description. And remember, if you want to try out Plex free of charge, no credit card required, you can do so with the link I've got in the video description. We get a small commission for every sign up. Uh, we also, of course, have the Plex Pass link down there too. If you want to purchase a Plex Pass or gift it to somebody else, you can find those links down below and every click will help out the channel. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Bill Reiner, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.